.vvm is an open source framework that has two main goals. The first one is to be able to build web applications using the model view view model approach. This approach is kind of familiar to uh, desktop developers if you have been using WPF or if you have been using Silverlight or Xamarin Forms, you probably know MVVM. And if you like this way of building uh, applications, you can use .VVM for web. The other scenario which, is, uh, which evolved uh, quite recently is that .VVM can be used to modernize old uh, ASP.NET applications because .VVM is supported on both .NET Framework and .NET Core. So you can use .VVM with the .NET Framework and you can use it as a migration bridge to, uh, to .NET Core. So it can be a thing that will help you to get rid of all web forms and go to .NET Core. So uh, if you are interested in this scenario, scenario, make sure to join us tomorrow at this time because I will be talking about this in, a, in a more detail. So .vvm is an open source framework for web UI, which means it's a presentation framework. So it helps you to manipulate with the contents of web pages and uh, it does all the presentation logic that you will probably need in your web development scenarios. Uh, we have become a member of the .NET Foundation, which is an organization that helps to uh, that helps to many open source projects that uh, are crucial to the .NET ecosystem. So uh, there are a lot of projects in this foundation and we are proud to be part of this organization. Or organization. And the .vvm is supported on both ASP.NET Core, which is the new platform that Microsoft is pushing forward, and also to the ASP.NET Classic. So if you are still using .NET Framework 4.5, 4 4.6 or something like that, you can still use .vvm and uh, there are no, there are practically no limitations. Yeah, .vvm can integrate into both these platforms. And there is an extension for Visual Studio because .vvm has its own syntax based on HTML and to be able to have IntelliSense and syntax highlighting and all those features you will need to build web apps in .vvm. Uh, we have an extension for Visual Studio 2019 and 2017. So it's uh, available and you can use it. It will help you work with .vvm. We also have a very simple extension for VS Code. It's, uh, it, uh, it allows uh, or it, uh, it ships only with a few features. So it won't be so comfortable as with the full Visual Studio. But if you are interested in using .vvm, in VS Code, let us know. And uh, if we see there is a larger demand for it, we can uh, invest in this area a little bit more. So how to build new web apps with .vvm? As I mentioned, .vvm is using the model view view model approach, which you may know from the WPF or Xamarin. And uh, basically we have uh, used just C Sharp and HTML so you can use uh, these languages and you do not know, do not need to know JavaScript pretty much. Uh, of course, if you know JavaScript, if you can use NPM and all those tools, uh, it's better because you will be able to do more. If you need to extend .vvm or integrate with third party controls, you will have to write some JavaScript. But to use the framework itself, you don't need to know uh, almost anything about JavaScript. So it's uh, not, there's not a huge barrier for uh, starting with .vvm because you don't need to learn new language and new platform, new tools and everything. Yeah, it's for .NET developers, it can be easier than, uh, than Angular because, or React because it's not only about uh, learning JavaScript language, it's also about learning all the libraries, all the tooling, all the things, and uh, it, it's tough. It, it will take a few months. Yeah. So in .vvm, we have the views, which are basically HTML files. They have a special extension, dot.html, and it's basically HTML with a few syntax flavors. So 
Um, there are, for example, data binding expressions, which are using, uh, which are being used in the MVVM. And there are also component, components, which are also a natural part of .vvm and uh, some other flavors. Then we have the view model and basically it's a C-sharp class. So you can write your application logic in C-sharp. You can use all the comfort you have in the Visual Studio. So for example, the debugger, IntelliSense, refactoring, Sharper, everything you will have. And it will be strongly typed because uh, .vvm as itself is designed to be strongly typed. So you will have syntax checking in the data binding expressions and uh, it can prevent quite a lot of uh, mistakes and typos. .vvm ships with a few built-in components. Actually, maybe few is not the correct word because there are more than 25 of them. And we have uh, very simple controls that just wrap some basic HTML elements like text box or button and things like that. And we also come with the advanced controls like grid view, which will be able to present your data, including sorting and paging and those features you will probably need. We have repeater, we have file uploading component, and there are plenty of them. And you will see, I will be showing them in a few minutes. So, uh, .vvm integrates seamlessly with uh, ASP.NET ecosystem. So uh, if you no matter if you are using ASP.NET Core or if you are using classic ASP.NET, .vvm is uh, trying to use as many things from the underlying platforms as possible, which means that, for example, .vvm doesn't handle authentication by itself. It relies on the authentication mechanisms shipped with ASP.NET Core or with OWIN. So if Microsoft creates a new way of integrating, for example, with Azure Active Directory, it doesn't matter if .vvm and how .vvm supports it because it's supported by ASP.NET Core and we will just use what's available in ASP.NET Core. So you don't need to worry about that. You will be missing some great ASP.NET Core features. If ASP.NET Core gets some feature, it's very probable that .vvm will get it right away. And the same applies uh, to Owen, except for the fact that Owen will probably not get uh, many new features because uh, right now all the focus is on ASP.NET Core, but we, we support. And uh, thanks to the integration into these ecosystems, we can also coexist with other frameworks in the same application, in the same process. And uh, you will probably, you have probably used this feature uh, at some point of time. For example, if you have been using ASP.NET MVC with SignalR, this is an example how two frameworks can live in the same application. They are sharing the authentication information about current user, current culture, localization, and all those things. And .vvm is just one of these technologies. So basically you just install a NuGet package and add .vvm in the request pipeline and it will fit into the ecosystem. I mentioned the modernizing uh, old web, uh, web apps. I will be talking about this uh, tomorrow, but uh, the problem of uh, ASP.NET web forms, which are still quite heavily used, is that it's not supported on .NET Core. So you need to stay at .NET Framework and you cannot use the new uh, features that came with .NET Core, like faster compile times, better NuGet dependency handlings, and there are a lot of improvements. And uh, with web forms, it, you're kind of stuck uh, so uh, .vvm uh, allows you to start replacing ASPX pages one by one. Because if you want to go to .NET Core, you have to get rid of web forms. There is no way how you could use web forms on .NET Core. So you need to replace these ASPX pages with something else. And if you choose .vvm to re as a replacement, uh, the good, good thing is that .vvm is supported on both .NET Framework and .NET Core. So and can coexist with web forms in the same application. So you can basically take one page by another and just replace them one by one. And the application is still working. It can still be deployed. You can still fix issues in the web forms parts. You can create new areas in .vvm or in web forms if you want to. And 
it still it will still work as one application. And if you use the similar CSS, the user might even not notice that he is in the different uh, technology because it will look the same way. And uh, the greatest thing is that you don't need to touch your business layer, you can keep it as is. So you will have to re rewrite something, but not everything. A lot of code can stay as is because you are still in .NET and you are only replacing the front end part of the application. And when you get rid of all web forms dependencies, which means you cannot use the system web assembly anywhere, so you have to replace all those things, but the rest can stay as is. So you can then just switch to .NET Core because .VVM syntax is the same on .NET Framework and .NET Core. So more about this tomorrow, I promise. And how to start with .VVM? It's very easy. Just you can just go to .vvm.com slash install and download an extension for Visual Studio or you can do it from Visual Studio itself. There is the tools, extensions and you can search for them. And if you write .vvm, it will give you the extension. So that's it. We are using the Visual Studio Marketplace, the official distribution channel for uh, extensions. And then you can just use file new project and search for .vvm project templates and you will be able to create a new .vvm, .vvm application. So let's do this. I will now switch in the Visual Studio and I will create a new project. And if you search for .vvm, uh, you have a free project template here. The first is for .NET Core. So this is uh, the one you will probably want to use for the new web apps. We are support the newest version of .NET Core. Or if you want to try it on .NET Framework, uh, you can just uh, use this Owen on .NET Framework. There is also an ASP.NET Core on .NET Framework, but this template will be deprecated because uh, ASP.NET Core is not supported on .NET Framework anymore. The new newest versions of ASP.NET Core don't work with the old .NET Framework. So I will be using this .NET Core version and let's create .vvm app for example. And uh, I will let .vvm create the default project. Uh, here I have some configuration options what to add in the default project template, but I will say just create project with the default settings. And uh, that's it, we have the project. So let's look what's inside. If uh, first I can open the CS project, so you can see this is a normal classic uh, ASP.NET Core application. And uh, you can see I'm running uh, on .NET Core app 3.1. So it's the latest version of .NET Core. And uh, this is just including .vvm files because we have some special extensions .html dot master and dot control and uh, that's it and i have one reference to a nuget package dot vvm dot net core just one nuget package so let's uh, let's close it and the program cs it's just normal program cs which you would find in any net core application and there is the startup file which uh, is the initial configuration of uh, .vvm. So in the first method, in the configure services, I am just registering .vvm services, so services at .vvm. And here uh, the ASP.NET Core request pipeline is configured and I'm just calling app use .vvm. So this plugs into the default request pipeline quite nicely. And if I would like to combine this with MVC, I could just say app use MVC or something like that, or use signal R or anything like that. So it can live quite easily with other frameworks in the application. And you may notice that uh, I'm using here some type .vvm startup. And if I open this class, this is the configuration of the .vvm itself. Because .vvm uh, can uh, use multiple pages, you can use some user controls, you can uh, include some resources in the page like scripts or styles and things like that. So everything like that is configured here. Right now I have just uh, added one route. Mm, that's the default route for the root URL of the website. And it points to the file views slash default dot.html. 
Yeah, so this is still pretty easy. That's uh, just the routing configuration. Okay. Now let's look in the view models and views folder. I have a default.html page, which is uh, basically an HTML file. You can see some uh, HTML syntax. And here is default view model, which is a C sharp class. Then I have a master page, which is basically a global template for my application. So if I look into master page, you can see there is standard HTML structure, like the HTML head body and things like that. And this content placeholder, this is a control which just says, okay, let's place the main content of the page here on this place. So here I have just the H1, this header, and it will be substituted to this place. So when .vvm will render this page, you will basically get this HTML with the H1 element right here. And this thing you can see here, it's a data binding and you may have uh, seen the title property in the view model. So I can set the title property to some value and then print it out in the page. Yeah, so that's how it works. And uh, let's uh, make a simple calculator. So I will remove this content. And uh, first, how would uh, the calculator work? I will use two text box controls. So the user can enter two numbers, the first one and the second one. And then I will add a button. And uh, when, I, when the user clicks the button, I will display the result of the operation. So I will just add those numbers uh, together. So in MVVM, you need uh, properties to persist the state of the uh, user controls. So the state of the page are basically those three numbers, the first number, the second number, and the result of the operation. So let's declare three uh, properties. So I will just create prop and number one. prop int number two and a result. Yeah. So let's now go to the view and let's create the user interface. So I will create some title, simple calculator and let's create the text boxes. And now in a classic HTML, you would be using input type text, but in .vvm we have components that support data binding. So I will use dot text box, yeah, dot colon text box. And as a text property, I will use the value binding. So I can say number one. And as you can see, the Visual Studio extension is giving me IntelliSense for that. Yeah. So let's create the second text box and I will bind it to number two and equals, and I will print out the result. And uh, you may notice that here for printing out values, I need to use double curly braces, not just single like here, because uh, single curly braces can have special meaning in scripts or style elements in the page. So that's why we decided to use double curly braces, but in the attributes, it's uh, pretty useless. So you can put double curly braces here, but you don't have to. So I'm keeping the simple, simpler variant this. Okay, let's create a button. And uh, when the user clicks the button, I will add those numbers together. And now I'm not binding to a value from the view model, but I want to call some command in the view model. So I will call function called calculate. And it's not declared in the view model. So I don't get intelligence for that but it doesn't matter, calculate, because I can have this function generated. So I can use control dot and dot VVM allows me to generate either async version or the synchronous version of this, uh, of this method. I will use the synchronous one because uh, it's just an in-memory operation. There's no await needed. Yeah. And now I can just update the state of my view model. So I can say result equals, oh, sorry, result equals number one plus number two. And when the user call, uh, clicks the button, this function will get called. It will update the view model and the changes in the view model will be written to the page. Yeah. 
So that's it. So let's look again at this markup. So I have text box control that's bound to number one, second text box that's bound to number two, and I'm printing out the result. And there is a button that calls the calculate method. It should, it should work. Let's, uh, let's run it. So I have pressed uh, control F5. I could press F5, which would uh, attach the debugger, but uh, I have, uh, I'm used to use debugger only when I really need it. So right now I have the simple calculator. You can see two text boxes and a button. So let's, for example, ask how much is five plus 10. And when I click the calculate button, you can see the result. Yeah, so the calculate method was called and uh, we got the result. Okay, let's put breakpoint here and let's run the application again, this time with the debugger. So a new window should be, should, uh, should open, hopefully. Okay. And notice the first request uh, in ASP.NET, it's always a little bit slower, but the next one should be really fast. This is just the startup of the framework and everything. Okay, so we are here. So let's use one plus two. And when I click calculate, I should get the breakpoint. Break so I have the full debugging experience because I'm just using C sharp. This is not a matter of the .vvm extension. That's because the view models are written in C sharp. So it's very easy to debug and you can stay with the tools you already know. Okay, so let's go, let's continue and we will get the result. And uh, maybe just one thing, uh, in uh, ASP.NET Web Forms, the page would do a full reload. Also, if you would be using, for example, Razor Pages, uh, if you don't do anything special, uh, it will do a classic HTTP post. So you will just post all the data and get the entire new page. .vvm is using Ajax and it only uh, sends just JSON representation of the view model to the server and back. So uh, there are no reloads of this page. I'm still on the same page. Just.vvm is just updating pieces of the UI which have changed. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. .html files are translated to plain HTML. Uh, because uh, this is the browser, of course, doesn't know what DOT text box means. So .vvm has to translate this into the HTML, HTML equivalence. So it will produce input type text with some knockout.js expressions. C Sharp view models have to be serialized to JSON so they can be available uh, in the browser. And uh, it will also, when you update the view model on the client side, uh, then uh, everything is recalculated without calling the server. I haven't show, I haven't uh, demonstrated this, but if you would write number one plus number two here, uh, then this expression would be translated to JavaScript, so it would happen on the client side. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a nice thing because there are a lot of things you can do in this way. For example, if I would uh, want to create a checkbox uh, and bind it, its value to enabled property of this text box, it would just work because the MVVM experience, uh, the MVVM experience will work on the on the client side as well. Yeah, so that's not just uh, about uh, calling the server for everything. Okay, and uh, MVVM uses Knockout.js library, which has been uh, really popular a few years ago. And uh, right now there are other frameworks. Uh, Vue is using a kind of similar approach than uh, Ask Knockout. So uh, we are still using Knockout, but maybe in the future, .vvm can switch to other framework. Right now we are still quite happy with Knockout and it's, uh, it's quite easy to use either from the JavaScript. So the, here is a, a short animation how the communication works. So the ASP.NET is running on the server. .vvm is just a middleware for ASP.NET. And uh, when the user loads the page, so uh, the ASP.NET will get just a standard HTTP GET request. So that's what happens when you press F5 
or if we just reload the site. Oh, I have stopped the debugger, so I need to start the app again. Yeah, but uh, in this case, the browser just sends HTTP GET to the server. Yeah. The server creates an instance of the view model, so it will create new calculator view model or something like that. Then it will process the DOT HTML file, so it will look for all the components and generate knockout.js equivalents of these components and it will serialize the view model and embed it in the HTML. Yeah, so it will send the HTML and the view model on the same request in, in one response. Yeah. Let's look how it works. If I view the source code of the page, you can see that it's quite clean HTML. We are including some scripts and those text boxes have been transformed to input type text with data bind, which is a knockout.js feature. It's an attribute where knockout.js is looking for controls with these attributes and it will bind the number one to the text box. We have our own binding handler, but uh, basically whatever appears in this property in the view model will get to the text box. And when the user changes the value in the text box, it will be written back to the view model property on the client. Then uh, the result, uh, printing out the result, it's done by knockout like this. So it will generate some knockout command and knockout will replace this command with the actual value of uh, this property. And the button was translated to input type button and we are calling some short script that will take the view model and send it to the server execute the calculate function and apply the changes to the page. Here are some another scripts. These were just preloads of the script. So this didn't actually include the script in the page. This is including the scripts. And there is a hidden field with the view model. You can see there is number one, number two and result. There are some validation uh, metadata which we need in order to make sure that it will be integer. And there is a cross-site request forgery token. It's a security feature uh, that prevents uh, attack some kinds of uh, web uh, attacks. And uh, basically that's it. This is the end of the page. This is how we initialize .vvm, which will change by the way in the, in the future versions. Yeah. So uh, basically we are getting HTML and the view model in one request. The hidden field is here because if the user goes away from this page, and then returns back. In most browsers, the values of the hidden fields are persisted. So he will, the, the user will return to the same state as he, as he or she left the page. Yeah. So that's how it works. And when the user clicks the button, then it's uh, a little bit complicated because we are not doing classic HTTP post. We are doing HTTP AJAX post. And basically we just take the view model and send it to the server. So it's, if the view model is small, it's very, it's just a few hundreds of bytes or something like that, because it's just the values of the properties. And uh, when, and again, and the server .vvm will create instance of the view model, then it will populate the client JSON in the view model. So it will just set the numbers to the values from the client. Then we will call the calculate method. So the result will be calculated from the values the client has given to us. And finally, we will serialize the new view model and return it back to the client. And uh, because we know what we got from the client, we are only sending the diff view model. So we just send the properties that have actually changed to in order to save the network traffic. We want to transfer as less data as possible. And when this response gets to the client, the knockout.js will just update the particular elements in the page. So only those things that have actually changed will be changed. So there are no full reloads of the page or nothing like that. It's done. And you didn't need to write a single line of JavaScript to be able to do this because .vvm itself is written in JavaScript. So we had to write a lot of JavaScript, uh, but you don't need to uh, write any 
uh, JavaScript, just HTML and C Sharp. Okay, uh, what controls you can find in .vvm? We have wrappers for the form controls, which are available in HTML. So we have text box, check box, radio button, combo box, file upload. Uh, we have buttons, we have button and link button. The difference is that the first is the real actual button. The second is a hyperlink that behaves like a button. So if you click on it, it won't navigate to another page. It will just call a command on the server. It's sometimes you, you just need a link that will behave like a button. Then we have a data controls, for example, a repeater, grid view, list view, and other things. They support data binding. So if you put a collection in your view model, then you can bind those controls to the collection and they will render their content based on the items in the collection. We also have other controls with special meanings, for example, the content placeholder and content to uh, create compositions like that the page is embedded in other page. Uh, we also have SPA content placeholder, which is a similar control that will create a single page, a single page app. We also have authenticated view and role view, which are all special controls that will allow you to display different content to users who are signed in and to anonymous users and things like that. And .vvm also part of these controls. There are a lot of features because .vvm is a fully major framework that you can use for building a line of business applications. So there are features you would uh, expect in these kind of applications. So uh, as I said, the master pages also support SPA, single page apps, and uh, creating a single page app in .vvm is as easy as changing content placeholder to SPA content placeholder. Uh, there can be only one SPA content placeholder in the page, but if you, if you uh, use it, and then if I would create a link to other page, it wouldn't be a normal link, uh, .vvm will change the link and it would just reload the, uh, the inner content of the page. So the master page will stay loaded and it just dynamically change the contents of this content placeholder. Okay, there is routing and it's for generating links. Uh, you can, you can uh, register your routes in, um, in uh, the application. It's very similar to MVC routing or also web forms that routing. So it's, uh, it's very similar. And then there is a routing control, which you can use for building links to other pages. It's much better to build your links based on route names than just uh, building your URLs by yourself. Because if you decide to change the URL, uh, it, you would have to go through all the entire application and change it on all places. Uh, here, it will just build the URL based on its route registration. So I will say the route name equals this. And if you want to specify some parameters, you can say param dash and name of the parameter in the route. And you can use either hard coded value or a data binding. Yeah, so you can bind those parameters and .vvm will build the URL, the URL uh, quickly. Localization, of course, because a lot of uh, line of business applications need to be localized to multiple languages. And uh, in .NET, we have resource files. So the easiest way is to use a special kind of binding, which is called resource binding. And you can just point it to a resource file and some key. Uh, you can use this binding to other things and there will be session about it uh, tomorrow. Milan will be showing how to use resource bindings to optimize some things up. But the original intent of this binding was to provide a way to, be, to bind to resource, resource items. So this is how you can do the localization. We also support uh, date and number formatting the same way as .NET is supporting it. So you can use, for example, the format string property on a text box and it will do all the formatting for you. And the format strings are exactly the same like those you know from, you know from .NET. So it's the same. We had just had to re-implement them in JavaScript. Validation is also using a lot of features you know from .NET Framework. So you can mark your view model properties with the required attribute or any other data annotations attribute. 
and .vvm will help you with validating this so it will make sure those conditions are are satisfied uh, there is also support for i validatable object interface so if the view model will implement this interface .vvm will evaluate the validate method and it will just uh, use all the results for the validation purposes and there is also a model state which you can use typically if you have a more advanced validation scenarios like for example you want to register a new user and you want to make sure that the user is not already registered so you will look in the database and if the email address is already been, been used you can just report your validation error in the model state and .vvm will display it like it's any other kind of validation error. You will, I will be showing validation in the next session, so stay tuned and you will see it in a few minutes. We have also validation controls. There is the validation summary, which will list all your validation errors at one place. And we also have a validator control. We can also attach CSS classes to elements that are not valid. If you use Bootstrap, for example, there is a CSS class called has error. And if you add this CSS class to some element, it will be uh, the contents of it will be displayed in a red color and they will be highlighted like they are invalid. So uh, it's very easy to do this with .vvm. We can dynamically attach and detach these classes based on the current validation state. We can also display the error messages, set tooltips and things like that. And .vvm uh, consists of the free uh, products, which is the .vvm framework, which is open source, is member of .NET Foundation, and it's being developed on GitHub. And uh, everything I have been talking about so far uh, is available in this open source framework, so you don't need to worry about some limitations. The framework itself is open source. There is also a free extension for Visual Studio. Uh, so if you go to marketplace.visualstudio.com and download .vvm extension, you can use it to build your .vvm applications. Uh, we are working on .vvm for more than five years and uh, it takes a lot of time and we need to make up some money for the bread we need to eat in order to produce more code. So we also have commercial products you can use them to save your time. Nothing in these products is essential. You can use .vvm without paying anything. But if you decide to use .vvm for some more advanced application, there's a high chance that these products will save your time. We have Bootstrap for .vvm, which allows you to use Bootstrap more easily. So if uh, I, I, really like, I really like Bootstrap because I don't have any graphical skills and uh, in Bootstrap, everything looks quite nice. So I'm just uh, composing my applications from various Bootstrap widgets. But every time I need to use model dialog or s more complicated widgets, I need to go to the documentation and copy paste all those divs with those CSS classes and things like that. And I don't remember anything. And Bootstrap for .vvm, there is a control, yes, model dialog, which will just render this crazy long piece of code for me. So uh, it just saves your time. Of course, you can use Bootstrap with .vvm without purchasing this package, but you will have to copy paste this code from the documentation. This will help you to generate it uh, using a shorter syntax. There is also .vvm business pack, which can be useful for more uh, complicated line of business applications. If you need advanced grid view with more features, if you need the advanced form controls like date time picker, color picker, autocomplete and multi-select and all those things, they are available in .vvm business pack. And we have also a commercial version of the Visual Studio extension, which has more features than the free version. Even the free version has a lot of them. There are the project templates, so you can create file new project.vvm. It will work in the free version. Uh, in the free version, there is also IntelliSense for .vvm controls. So .text box, you will have IntelliSense for this. You will have IntelliSense for control properties and things like that. The only thing there where you won't have IntelliSense is the view model. So if you just want to use the IntelliSense on the view model, uh, you need to, the commercial version. Uh, or you can ask for a trial 
uh, on our website. So if you register on .vvm.com, you can ask for a 30 days trial. And if you will need more time uh, to test everything, if, if, it, uh, if it works for your scenarios, let us know and we can extend the trial for a longer time. Yeah, uh, and you can live without this extension. It just saves your time. It just makes you more productive, but the framework is not limited. So uh, all the features of the framework will work even without this extension. So there is IntelliSense. It doesn't, it's not 100% feature complete. If you need more, you can purchase this package. Okay, so here are some links. So if you are interested in .vvm, Go to .vvm.com. There is also a link to our GitHub repo. If you want to start working with .vvm, visit our docs site, .vvm.com slash docs. And uh, if you are interested in uh, uh, looking at the source code of .vvm, here is a, a, a URL of our GitHub repository. If you will have any questions or thoughts or ideas, post an issue, we will be happy to talk with you. So uh, to recap, .vvm can be used to build new web apps using MVVM approach. So if you like MVVM from your previous desktop development projects, uh, I think that .vvm will, will be very easy for you to start because if you have been using WPF or Xamarin or technologies like this, even the control names are similar. We have grid view, we have uh, text box, we have a lot of a lot of controls you are probably familiar with. And uh, the view models are written in C sharp, so it's very easy to use. You can use debugger, you can use all the things you are used to from Visual Studio. If you are interested in modernizing web forms applications, again, uh, join us tomorrow at the same time at uh, 4 p.m. Central Europe or 2 p.m. Uh, UTC, and uh, you will you will uh, see some demos of uh, how to transition from web forms to uh, to .vvm and then to .NET Core. 